this is an iPhone 6 that is not mm -hmm. powering on. I received this phone from a mobile phone technician who has already worked on the phone. Yeah, the phone is not powering on, and uh, I just received the phone just at ease. As you can see, it's open, right? So we will try to revive this phone. So if you want to learn how to troubleshoot the, the iPhone step by step, then you can start from this video. And make sure you like, subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos, and don't forget to purchase my professional Android repairing course. Let's work on this PCB and see how we can revive this right now. Okay, so let's just open the phone and see how we can fix this problem. Okay, so the battery is disconnected and uh, okay, everything is already dismantled. So what we are going to do right here, we are going to use our multimeter. We are going to use our multimeter to test the battery connector and see the reading of the mobile phone. I'm just going to put my multimeter right here. I'm going to do this. Okay, so as you can see. So I set my multimeter to Buza mode. Buza and diode mode, as you can see right here, which is continuity test mode. So we are going to perform a cold testing. Like I always say, this is good in detecting uh short shorting component and detecting fault all right so i have the red probe here's my red probe to the ground that's the ground then i'm going to use my black probe this is the positive pin so i'm going to put that there okay so this reading is not a bad reading it shows that there is no shorting in the in the primary section of the phone so because it gives this reading doesn't mean that uh, there, there is no short so there is no short in the primary which means that okay the battery the v the v bat line which is the vcc in this iphone is okay so we are going to open the, the the mobile phone but before we do that we have to connect it to our gc power supply to see what's up with the phone okay what we will have to do right now is to connect the phone to our gc power supply which is the, 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 the device in which I use most when I'm troubleshooting mobile phones. But this power supply is very important if you have been watching my recent videos because when I connect it, I will know exactly where to check. So I'm just going to quickly look for the connector. Okay, do that. Okay, so what I'm seeing right here in my DC power supply, that's an abnormal reading. You understand? So it shows that there is a shortage in this mobile phone, even though our multimeter uh, detected that there is no short in the mobile phone. It shows that the, the, the VCC main is shorting, which is the secondary line. You understand the secondary and the main power supply. So now that we know this already, we are going to open the mobile phone, remove the, the mobile PCB, then go into our schematic diagram software and check the line which is the vcc and the vcc main so once we know where the circuit is we can start troubleshooting from there so make sure you follow and while you are watching don't forget to check my my professional level course which is for android in my youtube store or send me a message on whatsapp in case you want to purchase it directly but if you want to purchase it through my youtube store then you can just click on the link in the video description just click on the link in the video description or in the pinned comment to purchase my professional level android repairing course <laughs> Okay, so we have our mobile PCB right here. 
And uh, before we go on to remove any shield, because after checking my schematic diagram, we the VCC gets in right here, and we have the v VCC main also here. So before we go on to open this to check, because as we already know, it's coming from the secondary section, which means that there is a possibility that it's from this area, right? But we can just open it for no reason. Meanwhile, the shot is from somewhere else. So what we are going to do right here, we will see if we can use our DC power supply to detect the shorting part, which is the shorting circuit of the mobile phone. Uh, yeah, by connecting the DC power supply and see if it will generate any heat. So we are going to do that right now. I'm just going to connect it to a DC power supply. And before I do that, I will set, I will set it to 3.7 then I will yeah I will give out all the current I will give out all the current so I'm going to clip the GND clip it somewhere so that it can get in contact with the GND and uh, what I'm going to do here I'm going to clip this because I want to use this to inject the voltage and the uh, here so I'm just going to place my hand behind the PCB and I'm going to inject the current right there. Okay, so as you can see, <coughs> instead of showing them going off, showing going off, when I use the direct jumper probes right here, you can see that it doesn't show that type of shorting that is shorting then going off, the DC power supply is shorting and going off. So what I, you can actually see here is that it has a stable current consumption which means that there is a short, secondary short. You understand? There is a secondary short because these jumper cables, they haven't passed through any boot cable. Yeah, that's what you need to keep in mind. And I also reduce the, the current. So this is what I want you to understand. In some cases, if you notice that there is a short, right, but the current right here is not stable which means that the shot is shorting the dc power supply and the current going off and on as you see in the beginning of the video you can actually decrease the voltage to get a stable current consumption right here so that's why at least i decrease something right there and uh, here so we are going to place my palm right here and uh, hold on for some time to see which component is shorting right here i can feel heat right here I can feel heat in this section. So it shows that there is a shot in this section right here. So let me see if I should use my rework station to remove the shield or I can just cut out the shield. So just to make sure that everything that I do everything safely if I'm cutting out the shield with my drilling machine i'm going to see the schematic diagram then see the safe corners in which i'm going to cut it through if i can decide if i'm cutting it or okay i've decided to open everything up so here we are going to connect the phone to our pcb holder so because i'm opening it up opening everything up it's it's really big so i'm not going to use i'm not going to cut out i'm not going to use the the, the cutting uh, machine to cut out the shield you understand we are going to remove this with our rework station so as you can see here we have we have the the non chip right there so i'm going to avoid starting to to move you can see right here so if I start to remove it from this angle it, it means that there will be a lot of heat that will occur right here so which means that if I start from this angle when I'm coming here I won't it won't require much heat to remove and the, the, the non chip will be safe right there so these are the type of things that you need to keep in mind try when you are using your workstation to remove you need to avoid heating sections in which have bigger components right there so we will start removing it from this from this area so working with this right here is very hard when i'm working and recording i have to stand this camera right in front of me 
and it's it's very hard, very complicated to work with this. As you can see, I'm struggling just to do this. So I'm going to hit, hit it while trying to pull it up from this section. So as you can see, as you can see, just like that. You don't have to focus the heat in one section to avoid causing open circuit and other components you understand so you just have to try pulling it up from this section so that as everything is going in then you can shift your, your teaser in so as you can see okay easy as you can see right here i did not even uh, focus the heat right here but everything came out very very easy okay so i will take a close look everything thing looks okay everything looks okay right here but keep in mind the shot is coming from this area right so which means that what we will have to do from here to make things easily we don't have a thermal camera we will have to use our short powder we will have to spray the short smoke in the pcb so i will zoom in I'm going to zoom this in okay that's okay right so yep, we are going to use this right here okay so be before we continue there is one thing that i want you to understand the shot there is a, a possibility that the shot is from this particular section and why that the secondary line of this mobile pcb starts from here see this that the first capacitor that handles the secondary voltage of this mobile pcb so we are just going to spray everything right here because you see these other capacitors right here if they are using a standby voltage a standby uh, uh, vcc main voltage it can also cause this type of short circuit hi hi promise how are you doing today bro okay i think that should be okay right so i'm going to zoom in a bit again okay okay this should be okay i don't know if i should use a microscope so that you can see everything clearly but this should be okay so what i'm about to do right here i will inject the voltage with a high current as you saw so earlier i already set a high current so i'm going to look for my schematic diagram okay to see if we, i'm going to inject the voltage right here i'm looking for the positive line of the vcc okay i'm going to do this okay you see that so it shows that this component is not okay that's a component shorting so i'm going to do this again now i will try to use something i will try to use this with a, a more smaller head as you can see i just clip it right there connect the gnd to the ground then inject the voltage here okay you see that Shows that that's the component that is shot in, right? Yeah. So I will I will check the schematic diagram to see if removing this component because I don't think I have that component. Let me see. So I will actually have to replace that component there. Yeah, but I think the the, the phone can actually switch on without that component. 
the VCC main is connected to one side of the component Why the, the VCC line from the V but yeah not a V but when it comes to iPhone from the battery voltage is connected to one side while the VCC main the main power supply is connected to the other side so right now I don't have that component so I want to see if removing the component without replacing it Oh, I totally messed up this whole video. I tell you what, I recorded this video a few weeks ago and I had no time to edit the video. So right now, I just noticed that a lot of parts are no more available. Maybe I mistakenly deleted them on my phone. So I'm recording this voice over while editing the video. So I will just explain how everything was. So I removed the component and I noticed that the shot was still there. I removed this component, the shot was still there and after going through the schematic diagram, I troubleshoot the phone more deeply and I noticed no component was sitting up so I had to remove the charging IC to see if the shot will stop but yet the phone was still short and I noticed this capacitor near the CPU that was shorting so you can see I removed the capacitor and uh, right here the I jump pad I test and the, the VP, VCC main was no more shorting so I had to clean everything so I had to clean everything to replace back the charging IC and the component in, in which I first removed I keep saying VP, VPAD, VPH because I mostly worked on and explained on uh, Android phones so as you can see right here I'm cleaning everything oh man I'm sorry I really messed up this video by uh, the, the missing part I really wanted the explanation to be clear like how I tested everything how I got here there are a lot of parts that are missing in this video because I recorded the video I think two to three weeks ago so you can see right here so this point was missing so I had to to jump at that point before replacing the IC that point is a very important that's a very important point right there and looking at the the PCB right here on the schematic you can see that this IC let me see this IC seems like it doesn't have a pin with a GND which means that the, the IC could not have been shorting yeah shorting the, the VCC main of this mobile phone but it was hitting up just because of the capacitor around the, the CPU that was shorting right if I had a, a thermal camera I would have noticed that capacitor a long time before even going deep into doing this because the capacitor was just having a little bit of heat and so but then what I noticed that so I cleaned everything as you can see everything is ready right here to to replace the ICs so right here I have to recall the ICs cleaning everything in everything right here so to make the solder balls as you can see right here and there uh, I just heat everything up okay so you can see right here cleaning the IC and um, yeah this one is the charging IC right so I had to to also revolve this IC as well because this IC is okay the, the reason why the IC was hitting at first was the, the cost by the capacitor in which we just removed that was hitting so this IC is okay so I had to replace back the ICs in the mobile phone because I tested and there was no more shot in the mobile PCB so I had to do this again so the other parts were missing because I was recording this part you can see the different the quality you can be recording this part different phone which is not mine my phone storage fold and I was editing so that's why the parts yeah the parts are no longer available right here so I tested and the phone was the trigger circuit was okay so I had to to mount back the phone to the chassis right here so you can see okay and then put everything together you can send me a message on WhatsApp if you want my Android repairing course which starts from the basic of troubleshooting to the professional level or you can purchase it directly from my YouTube store. You can find the link in the pinned comment or description as you can see right here. It's succeeded in triggering the phone.